Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about the anatomy of the anal canal. We are going to mainly focus on the gross anatomy, development, blood supply, nerve supply and the lymphatic drainage and hemorrhoids which is a main clinical scenario uh, related to anal canal. Anal canal is the terminal segment of the large intestine. It is the part situated between the rectum and anus and it is nearly 4 cm in length. It is beginning at the rectoanal junction then run downwards and backwards and ends at the anal orifice. As important relations of the anal canal here you can see the pubis, puborectal is part of the levator ani and the coccyx. Now we are going to look at a coronal section of rectum and anal canal. Rectum and anal canal consist almost all the typical tissue layers as a part of the elementary tract. In the rectum from inside to outside we can see uh, epithelium or mucous membrane, submucosa, inner circular smooth muscle layer and outer longitudinal smooth muscle coat. The epithelium is a simple columnar epithelium and it has an endodermal origin. It is extend up to the upper part of the anal canal. In this level, there is a muscular fold present named as anorectal ring. It is formed by the fusion of three muscles. The first one is the deep part of the external anal sphincter. The second one is the internal anal sphincter and the third one is piborectal is part of the levator any muscle. There are two anal sphincters we can see internal and external anal sphincters. Internal anal sphincter is the continuation of inner smooth muscle layer. Though it is made up from smooth muscles, uh, it is involuntary in action. Surrounding the internal anal sphincter, there is the external anal sphincter. It is made up from skeletal muscles, so it is voluntary sphincter. It consists of three parts known as deep, superficial and subcutaneous parts. This is the puborectal part of the levator and muscle. You already know the deep part bends with the puborectal is part of the levator ani and the sphincter ani internus to form the anorectal ring. This is the conjoint longitudinal coat. It is formed by the fusion of puborectal is part of the levator ani and the longitudinal smooth muscle coat. So it's a muscle layer descends between the two sphincters and divides into septa at the level of the white line of Hilton. White line of Hilton is the demarcation line between the middle part and the lower part of the anal canal. Uh, we are going to talk about it later. So the septa of the conjoint longitudinal cord pierces the subcutaneous part of the external anal sphincter and attach with the perineal skin. Now we are going to talk about the internal appearance of the anal canal. Anal canal can be divided into three parts according to its internal appearance. The first 1.5 cm is the upper part, the second 1.5 cm is the middle part and the terminal part is the lower part. Upper part is lined by a mucous membrane which is the same epithelium covers the rectum. So it is a simple column epithelium which having a endodermal origin. Mucous membrane forms 7 to 8 longitudinal folds known as anal columns. Lower ends of the anal columns united each other and forms the anal valves. Anal sinuses present above each valve. Mucus secreting anal glands open into anal sinuses. Anal valves together form a transverse line. It is called pectinate line. Lower end of the middle part is whitish. 
so the line demarcating the middle part and the lower part is known as white line of hilton middle part is covered by a stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium and the submucosa contains dense venous plexus so this part is bluish in color anal columns anal valves anal sinuses are present here and also hair sebaceous and sweat glands also absent here the lower part is lined by a true skin so sweat and sebaceous glands are present here the epithelial covering of the lower part is stratified squamous keratinized epithelium now we going to look at the blood supply nerve supply and the lymph drainage of the anal canal both morphologically and surgically the most important landmark of the anal canal is the pectinate line it divides the anal canal into upper and lower areas the anal canal below the pectinate line develops from the proctoideum or the ectoderm while that above the pectinate line develops from the endoderm of the hind gut this developmental change has led to the differentiation of the blood supply nerve supply and the lymphatic drainage of the different parts of the anal canal the anal canal above the pectinate line supplies from the superior rectal artery below the pectinate line supply from the inferior rectal artery sensory supply above the pectinate line is supplied by the autonomic nerves from inferior hypogastric gastric plexus while below the pectinate line is supplied by the inferior rectal branch of pudendal nerve inferior hypogastric plexus already gives a motor supply to internal anal sphincter inferior rectal branch of pudendal nerve gives motor supply to external anal sphincter lymph above the pectinate line drains into superior and middle rectal nodes lymph below the pectinate line drains into superficial inguinal nodes venous drainage above the pectinate line is by superior rectal vein below the pectinate line venous drainage by inferior and middle rectal vein superior rectal vein drains into portal vein via inferior mesenteric vein inferior and middle rectal vein drains into inferior vena cava via internal iliac vein branches arising from the superior middle and inferior rectal veins form plexus in the submucosa and the adventitia of the anal canal called rectal venous plexus so due to this connection between portal vein and the inferior vena cava the anal canal is a site of photosystemic anastomosis the rectal venous plexus fibroelastic tissue and smooth muscles together form submucosal masses called anal cushions the usual positions of the anal cushions are the left lateral right anterior and right posterior positions in lithotomy positions they are present on 3 11 and 7 o'clock positions hemorrhoids or the piles are the engorged vascular cushions found within the submucosa of anal canal the usual sizes of hemorrhoids also the same positions where the anal cushions present hemorrhoids can be further divided into two internal hemorrhoids and external hemorrhoids internal hemorrhoids occur above the white line they are generally painless external hemorrhoids occur below the white line they are generally painful so this is a brief overview of the anatomy of the anal canal i hope you would found this video helpful subscribe to our channel for all upcoming videos and like our fb page and get awesome short notes and flash cards